a very exciting guest today. She is a world-renowned intimacy coach known as the kink shrink. She specializes in breaking down the basics of how to hook up while managing expectations and setting boundaries. And we love that here. She empowers women to take control of and celebrate their sexuality by helping them explore their fantasies and juggle multiple partners. And in her book, in her book, Hook Up Without Heartbreak, How to Feel Empowered After Casual Sex, she gives step-by-step directions to the women who want to be the best at exploring their sexual prowess. So please welcome Leah Holmgren. Hi guys. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm, good, I'm just going to go ahead and say it right off the bat. Third time is the charm with you in so many ways. This episode, we wanted to manifest this episode so hard. So like we've been having like, this is our third time doing the intro and it was definitely the best and our third time trying to record this episode. So we are so excited to have you here and we are so excited about the content of your book because I've never heard it quite said like that hookup without heartbreak. And I think it's something that so many people can relate to. I know that I have definitely hooked up with heartbreak before. And I want to know what really, what inspired you to write this book? I think that, uh, number one, to have enough of my own pain. (laughs) And then also seeing all, all the women I knew as friends, girlfriends, and my clients, they were heartbroken after hookups. So I was collecting ideas for many years. And then when COVID hit, I decided to write them down and create a beautiful guide. I love that. For women. That's great. And And for men too. Yeah, (laughs) I know. We're going to get to that. (laughs) So um, there's a quote at the beginning of your book that I really, that we really loved. And it's humans can turn suffering into art. Um, and one of the things is when we first started this podcast, we really went through a journey of reclaiming the word pussy and really transmuting the definition of that for us through our, our, our savior, (laughs) Mama Gina, shout out to her pussy reclamation. If you haven't read the book, Mm -hmm. um, and really starting to own our own voice openly and exploring our sexuality. And that's something that I can really relate to because I before this podcast had moments where I was single and experienced hookup with heartbreak. And then I would say I had an experience after doing this podcast, I was single and I was able to own it in such a different way. So why did you start this book with that particular quote? I want to know. Well, because as I said, I had a lot of pain in my life and, um, just writing about it, you know, helps. And, um, I think that a lot of art is coming from pain. If you look at paintings, if you look at poetry, that's the, the amount of, of, of this creation that come from someone being hurt. Mm. It's that's why I wrote it because I think that's why I was writing this book and, and I wrote three books, which I only published this one, but all of them were written from some kind of pain. And you know, you know it's also like cathartic when you do it. You write it and you let it go. It's better than talking to a therapist. And then you, you, you know, you just process the experience better. Yeah. I could definitely relate to that. Mm. Like having gone through, we've all gone through a lot of personal stuff on this podcast. This podcast, I guess is kind of our art. And, you know, I personally went through a breakup and, and having community to share and art around it made it totally different. I don't know if Katie or Sugar, you guys can relate to that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I feel like we've really been on a, a journey um, in our sisterhood of turning our our pain into pleasure, which is so interesting because those that's kind of the they're the same coin but different sides, pain and pleasure. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's definitely been many times I've come on this show and haven't really wanted to reveal my pain. And then mm-hmm. every time mm-hmm. I do, and it takes like we call uh, vulnerageous shares, like being vulnerable and courageous, there is this release and this opening just by speaking it or writing it into uh, our community um, mm-hmm. that is really healing. That's yeah. That is so well said, Katie, it, because, and, and I do think, and this is something that you're doing, Leah, right? Like, when we are vulnerable about the pain or suffering or something hard that we've gone through, other people can relate to it. And I think that's the beauty of your book, Leah, right? Like you really were able to transmute something that was very painful and be vulnerable with it. What had you want to share this with other women and be vulnerable about it? 
Uh, can you repeat, please? Yeah. So what had you, like your book obviously comes from mm-hmm. a really vulnerable place, right? Yeah. So what had you want to be open about that with other women? Like what was your commitment in writing this book? What did you want to leave mm-hmm. women with? You know, I think that if we don't open up and don't show our real character and who we are and how we feel, then we can't really help others. The same with King. Like it took me a long time to, to actually go public with being a dominatrix mm-hmm. in the past and, and, and King coach. It was very painful, very difficult, but I realized if I'm not going to be open about it, then I will not have other people trusting me. Mm-hmm. Like. I have the experience and I've been around that industry and around people and I like King myself. So I think I had to take this, um, I, I have to just open up about it. And the same with the, with the hookups. If I'm going to pretend I never hook up, I'm, I'm not loving casual sex. How are the women going to feel comfortable around me when they want to come for coaching or if they want to read my book? Mm. You did, know, so did being a I took one for the team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. So did did being a dominatrix in a way help you to discover like what's in your book about how to hook up without heartbreak? Did that have an impact on it? Just a little bit. Um <laughs> okay. I think I think it it helped me to love myself more for sure. Mm. It helped me to value myself more and be more demanding when it comes uh, to men and what I want, what I expect. Mm. Because before I was a dominatrix, men used, were using me more and I was always too sweet. Mm. And I did not have boundaries. And an amazing part of being a dominatrix is you have very strict boundaries. Mm. And not only you, even the people coming to you, because it's a very sensitive topic. And you can mm. hurt people. Not in a psychological way, but in a physical way. So people respond to that really well. And they understand if I'm not going to have clear boundaries, uh, I might end up really badly <laughs> in the session. Right. Yeah. And for oh, me wow. also, because I don't know this guy. So I have to be very strict about what is allowed, what is not. Uh, domination is not prostitution. I'm not offering sex. The man can touch me there. You know, I don't do any of that. So I have to be very strict. And I never was strict like that with guys in my private life. Mm. I didn't know how. And the work taught me how to be strict with men and how to know what I want. Be kind, but strict. And that's how I was dominating men. I was very kind. I respected their boundaries, mm-hmm. but I wanted them to respect mine. And that taught me to, to be a better, I mean, hooking up better too, because you have the boundaries and the communication has mm-hmm. to be very clear. You can come to, to the BDSM session and have unclear communication. You, you just don't get anywhere with that. Yeah. You, know, you have to be very direct about what you want. I have to be mm. honest here being kind, but strict. There's something about yeah. that combination of words that really turns me on. It's like, you're going to be kind, but strict because I think a lot of times as women, we, we have to, we sort of waver in our boundaries a little bit because we think that's kind, but mm. the word strict, like there's not no way around that. It's like, these are my boundaries. And I, that really, that's hot. I, I love that. Especially that you said in a that. Czechoslovakian accent. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. While in, I'm glad while, you like it. <laughs> while in cream latex, might we add, I have never seen someone pull off cream latex. I know. It's from Tokyo. She oh. wore, yeah. Of course it for is. For anyone who's yeah. watching us on YouTube, she, or for anyone listening who wants to watch us on YouTube, she is wearing this beautiful cream color colored like neck high latex like oh my god and there's a cutout for the cleavage i'm dead ah, so hot. and then she said it's from tokyo okay well girls we're gonna have to do a, a tokyo tour and I know. But we have to only wear latex when we're there it's a it's a kind of place i love it so much yeah it's great i'd be fine if this was our workplace uniform i know it makes it, i feel <laughs> like we should come day. wearing latex yeah yeah so i don't know yeah. if, if you've ever heard this but i know that there's this term thrown around a lot um hookup culture if you're, oh yeah. How yeah, how I mean, would you define hookup culture? I think it's the transition that's happening currently for past 10, 15, maybe 20 years. And I mean, casual sex is becoming more acceptable, although it's more acceptable for men, not for women. I mean, we are getting there in LA, New York, but if you think about the rest of the world, it's not really the, the, the case. And maybe Miami too. culture pretty... also changed like a decade ago with all the apps, you know, Tinder and Bumble and you name them. So that is contributing to having hookup culture. And people sometimes think about casual sex, like having a Starbucks coffee. So 
it's you know it's just not as oh my god you're having sex with someone it's pretty it's it's becoming pretty normal so i think that's the time we live in but the issue is like we have all this tech to hook up fast but we don't have the rules and the boundaries mm. uh, and nobody gives the education on how to do it the way that it's pleasant and safe mm. and now i don't mean like oh don't meet stranger you know first time in his house that's that's not what i'm talking about i think everyone has a common sense and knows but <laughs> It's more about the the soul, how how mm. to protect our souls from for, from from being hurt in this kind of encounters. How to process the aftermath, especially. Mm. Well, like and now what? Like the the shame and like sure we have hookup culture, but is the is the is the culture and the society actually allowing this? Yeah. Oh, very well said. So let's actually let's actually dive into a little bit of the meat of this. And I I love that you said. Yes, obviously we have common sense, but this, these are the boundaries for your soul. And that, oh, when you said that, it actually like reverberated through me and that's, let's, so let's, let's dive into that a little bit for the people, our listeners who are listening right now that really are wanting to explore hookup culture and are maybe disempowered. What are some things that they can do? Like what, when you say boundaries, like what are you really talking about beyond the common sense? To me, boundaries are, well, first of all, boundaries with myself. So I have to know myself to, to be able to go and hook up with someone. If I know that I'm going to feel terrible afterwards, or I felt terrible in, in the past often, then I will be smarter about the next hookup and I will know myself better. I will not want to make the same mistake again. And I will communicate this clearly, you know, because oftentimes we want to just have sex, but we actually deep inside of us are craving something else like attention or intimacy Mm. and it's important to know that and then you can establish the real boundaries and say you know what i'm going to see this guy i'm attracted to him but i'm not really into having sex with him i am craving company connection watching a movie and i have to know this and i will communicate it with him because guys get so angry when you when they expect sex and then there is a situation where you are watching the movie and sex don't have doesn't happen and then Oftentimes women just have sex because they want to have conflict mm. and are too kind. Yep. <laughs> and then we have all the traumas happening, you know. Right. Yeah. So like setting, and, uh, setting expectations and... going into the date. Yeah. 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 Right. But in order to do it, you have, we have to know what we really want. First and foremost. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Go ahead and sugar. Yeah. And this idea of, you know, of, you know, where we may feel obligated Right. But from not having a conversation about our boundaries and keeping that a secret and not being completely honest and truthful about those boundaries, well, then of course that person's going to feel obligated. Oh, I need to, they've been so nice to me and they came over and they cooked me dinner. So I need to give them a blowjob, I guess. Yeah. I know, I, I, I know for me personally in, uh, uh, about a year ago, I got a massive, I had a massive awareness around a blind spot I had in this exact area where I got so pro at keeping people, uh, or the men in my life that I wanted to be friends with close enough where they thought they had a chance so that I wouldn't lose their friendship, but I wouldn't get too close where like I would end up hooking up with them. But I'm like, I noticed this sort of control to control the relationship that showed up for me about, about a year ago and something that I've been actively working on. Where do I need to, where am I not speaking my truth? Where am I not saying what's actually there? What's actually there is, Hey, I really want to be friends with you. Mm. Can we Mm -hmm. be platonic? That's really insightful. Yeah. What are, what are some of the other, you know, you mentioned like, what are the sort of the common mistakes or mishaps that you see most common that, people do that sort of get them into a place where they don't want to be? Well, it's not, not that much about the mistakes, but it's just something we can't really control. Mm. Like the hormones and, and, and the upbringing and our past even, you know, the, how we are used to do things from thousands and thousands of years. Mm. So it is kind of an internal fight because rationally we know these things after someone reads my book, then she, she, or he can say, okay, he, I'm acting this way because my hormones are crazy. My oxytocin, or this is how we are uh, programmed to react. And now I have to be strong enough to 
push my emotions aside and not let them uh, affect me too much. And it's not easy. Mm. It's a very difficult task, but it's, it, I, I believe that awareness is a key. So once I know why I'm acting this way, I at least don't feel like completely retarded because sometimes really I would have sex with someone who was completely not eligible to be my boyfriend or a husband. I consider myself really accomplished and, and I would be crazy about a guy who was like, uh, what is he going to offer me in my life? And it, it would be going on for months and I would waste my time and money to, to beg this guy to see me again and fly around the country to see these people. And I was like sitting on the flight oftentimes, like, am I on drugs or what I'm doing here? <laughs> so that's the mistake that, uh, as I said, like, I can't really say it's a mistake. It's the nature, mm. but it's unlearning, it's enough. unlearning yeah. sort of the culture and the yeah. hand that we've been yeah. dealt. And it sounds like that's sort of two things like, unlearning so that you can create yeah. what you want and also being aware. I mean, I, I would sometimes when my hormones are impacting me, oh, I literally am like floating outside of my body, watching mm-hmm. myself be a bitch, but just can't stop it. It's like, and the yeah. hormones are a real thing. I mean, not always, yeah. but sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they are. And, and I think just in those moments, really like before you go and out and hook up, write it down. And just have it in front of your, uh, I don't know, on your bed, uh, on your table or on your mirror, like sticky note, you know, this was a hookup, uh, forget this guy, like throw it away, yeah. throw away the sticky note next day. That's a great, sure, so that's if it was great. And he calls you again, that that's fine. But don't, don't do things that are against your boundaries. Don't try to reach out to him and like beg him to come and travel to see this guy on your own cost. <laughs> that's mm. like the worst. Right. Yeah. So I'm mm. hearing a couple of things like one get really clear about what your standards are mm-hmm. and don't, and don't allow yourself to spend time with people that are outside of your standards. And then when yeah. you say write it on a post-it, are, are you talking about actually writing down what you're willing to do on the date? Or what do you mean by that exactly? Just write down what, before you go to the hookup, take a sticky note and write, this is just the hookup. I will not be attached to this guy. Mm-hmm. I want sex. I want orgasm and that's it. And just leave the sticky note on the mirror. When you come back home from the hookup, you have it there, you have it there, and you leave it there as long as you need. Or if you feel like you can't let go, maybe just like throw it away as, as something mm. that it was an experience and it's done. And then move on. Because sometimes we need the reminder. And so you need, to be, kind. You need to be kind and strict with yourself as well. Exactly. And yeah. that's really yeah. difficult. <laughs> yeah. I know I know the whole post-it note thing is wildly turning Katie on right now. Katie is yeah. a huge fan of post-it notes. She gave me like a Costco-sized packet of post-it notes for my birthday. Both, both of them. <laughs> so that cute. one is sugar too. Um, sugar, I love, you muted. Yeah, I have them too. I yeah. love that. Everyone. I love that. And I think that's great. And I'm just thinking about the people who are listening. And I'm, I've definitely been one of those people in the past to start to catch feelings, even though you know better, do you have any advice for people who are really, who, who kind of like start to have feelings, even when they know it's wrong? How do you snap yourself out of it when you catch feelings really easily? So if the guy's not really responsive, I think that is easier, you know, because once you don't see someone for two weeks, three weeks, it's kind of wearing off. The worst part is if they're keeping us like, okay, maybe there is always this maybe, yeah. you know, so I wrote the book more for women. They are struggling. Like if everything goes well and a guy is a great obedient boy toy and you can call him when you need to, that's fine. But if you struggle and he's not replying or he keeps you in this, like, you know, like this, this funk that you don't know what's going to happen next, then that's, that's why I wrote the book mostly for this situation. And so, and, and so just like, yeah. And so what's like one or like what, what's one or two things that people could do if they're in that? Cause like, it's kind of like they, have you ever on how I met your mother? They had this thing. It's like, you're on the hook. Yes, they they communicate the just yeah. enough to make you think that there's potential. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think it's fair, but guys do it all the time. So I just like to go and fuck someone else. <laughs> hey, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, that, like, like literally it helps to find, find different object of interest. Yeah. Mm. And I'm not suggesting to like go from one guy to the other, but it oftentimes helps. Just find a fun, interesting guy or someone you can flirt with, go out with him. You know, like I like to, to keep multiple guys on rotation because if I get too overwhelmed with one, I have another one. Mm. Or girls, if, if someone is bisexual, 
lesbian and and yeah i think that that really helps and then of course loving yourself do something fun for yourself you know do meditation just understanding that this was an experience and everything ends and that's how life is everything has a cycle everything has ending like we can't expect that things will be forever yeah i can only imagine you have like these lineup of men that you're like circulating and you're in communication with them about like you are my fuck toy. Like there is nothing else happening beyond here because I wrote a post-it and it said it's not happening unless, you know, something changes down the line. Like that just probably keeps them coming back. Like oh, yeah. makes it yeah. so desirable, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Irresistible. Love men love it. I mean, what could be better? I do. You know, like for God, if, if the sex is great, of course, guys told me a couple of things why they would never come back to, to a woman, but if the sex is great and the woman is not clingy and not like showing them all these emotions, they come back all the time. But I also believe if you really fall in love, then it's important to tell him and also break it up. Because if I know that there is no chance, first of all, like if the guy is mm. not someone I could end up with or he doesn't want me, then I don't want to be wasting my time too much because every time I'm going to have sex with him, it's going to get worse. Yeah, you mm. break up the hookup. Yeah. If you start to it's like fall. I get more attached and more attached and suddenly you're in like one sided relationship. Mm. I have to say this is really true and what I'm discovering in this conversation is there is an energetic, mental and emotional shift from I would say hooking up inside of what we would call sort of a patriarchal paradigm versus sexually empowered. And I've had both experiences, you know pre clit talk and post clit talk, you know, during clit talk, there was a moment where I was single in between my relationships and there was a genuine shift in me in the past when I dated, I would be that girl that would get really emotionally attached. And what I uncovered was it was, I felt like I had to pretend or, or actually get attached because that meant that I was like a pure woman or I couldn't have sex on the first date because that would make me a slut. It was really important to me to occur as wife material and not as a slut. Right. But then after mm -hmm. clip talk and, and I had a lot of guys being like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And you know, it was like normal dating. So after clip talk, when I went and I was single and I, you can't do this as a manipulation. I think it has to be very genuine. I genuinely felt sexually empowered and just wanted to have fun. I was going to sex parties as a single girl. I was hooking up with guys. I was telling them, I'm just looking for a hookup buddy. Everybody wanted to be my boyfriend. I was like, what the yeah. fuck is going on here? Now that I just want to hook up with you, you all are trying to date me. And so there's, there's some validity to it. And I couldn't, at the time I couldn't figure it out. But now that I'm talking to you, it totally makes sense. Yeah, because it's drama free, you know, yeah. like a sexy woman who is great in bed and is offering no strings attached relationships. It's amazing. I mean, it's every man's dream yeah. at the beginning. And that's when they also fall in love the fastest way because they think, oh my God, like I had the biggest, I mean, now I, I, I'm not doing, I'm not hooking up anymore. I've been with someone for many years, but, but when I used to, um, you know, the biggest players that they would have every other day, someone else would like. We keep returning to me and that at some point after a couple of years they said you know from all these women i decided to be with you i said well but guess what <laughs> i don't want to be with you <laughs> mm. but it was fascinating that i was like wow i never thought this guy would ever settle and they would offer that mm. but there were also men that they said you know i'm too cold for them that they just cannot sleep with me when I tell them I just want sex with them. Mm. Of course, they were guys, they were more emotional. I mean, they always would have sex with me, but, <laughs> but they were complaining about it. That, oh, I would love to have a relationship. Aww. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. People want what they don't have. Mm. I have a question for fun. you. Yeah. When, when, when sex is taken off the table, do you find that with your clients and your experiences that men actually gain more interest? Then sex is off the table. Like yeah. if they want to just be with someone as a friend, I don't or think I can. Hmm. Yeah. Like when it's like, Hey, we're, we're not going to, this is not happening the first night we hang oh, out oh, and it's yeah, taken. Of course. Yeah. 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 They want to like guys, are, that's, that's what men do. They try to push the, the envelope, you know, they try to, they try to break the rules and push the boundaries and it gives them even more fun because when they expect they're going to have fun, they lose the interest. 
You know, right. it sounds it sounds like there's a psychological component yeah. to there, and you are yeah. the you are coined the kink yeah. shrink. Yeah, there's, it but sounds not, like there's not all guys though. Not all guys are like that. There are truly men, and that when you say I don't want sex, they will respect it. They will not try to push. I think you that know. you know all these rules like. I think it, it depends on the people, right? I've heard, yeah. don't have sex till yeah. the 10th date. I've heard, don't have sex till the third date. I've heard, I met my husband having sex okay. on the first date. I think it's, yeah. I think it's more about what you were pointing to having boundaries and really having standards and knowing what works for you. Like I'm currently with a partner. We started as hookup buddies. I know for women okay. who've done that, it doesn't work for them. So I really think it is your intention behind it. Yeah, and things change. Look, we are fluid. It, yeah. As I always said, it doesn't mean when you're going into something and you want one thing and it can change over time. We're human beings. We have emotions and everything is changing all the time. So you can adjust as you go. Yeah. That's why I said you might be in a hookup relationship with someone, then you fall in love and you need to state it because maybe he fall in love too. Yeah. Or maybe he says, you know what, uh, this is never going to happen. And then you can make a decision. So you have to always check. It's like almost having a board meeting, you know. <laughs> With yourself and with someone. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, the, the thing when you ask sugar, it's, it's difficult because I personally, I'm very direct. I'm European. I don't like this. this I don't like sugar coating things. I don't like playing games. Like for me, it's really difficult. Um, and when I tell to a man, I'm not interested to have sex, I'm not interested to have sex. You know what I mean? So if he's trying to push and have sex, I get really aggressive on him. Like I get really angry. And I don't know if I want to see him again. Like I get truly upset because I clearly stated I don't want to have sex and he's trying. That's kind of lame in my opinion. So I would not mm. use it as a tactic, te technique to get someone's attention or stuff like that. But there are some yeah. guys, they, you know, I don't know that as, as you said, it depends on what you want and what the woman wants. Mm -hmm. if she wants to play this route. Well, speaking, yeah. speaking of men, <laughs> um, we do have a, a male, we do have about like 20 to 30% of our listeners are men on this show. And I know nice. that you do have a chapter in your book specifically for men. Can you tell yeah. us, a, do you have any advice for them, um, to navigate this realm of wealth, wealth, we wealth <laughs> life <laughs> to navigate this realm yeah. of life <laughs> um uh, any for all the for all of our male listeners who are listening yeah so the book has four parts the first one is solely for women the second one uh, is interesting for both and fourth one is for men solely and then um i think that every guy should read this book because it explains the biology neurobiology the the, the hormones the, the history and where are we all coming from as human humans and i think once guys know why women act certain way they will be more patient and more understanding in my opinion because they don't know like oftentimes guys said you know i met this really great girl we had a great time and then she became clingy or she's too emotional and i don't like when guys say that because we, we are different than them and sometimes we can't control this. So mm. I give them advice how to deal with those situations, how to be kind, how to also not hurt women, not, not cause them trauma because you can get traumatized through two, three bad hookup experiences. You know, it creates limiting beliefs for the future. And then, you know, you might think oh, all the hookups are bad and what did I do? And I'm dirty and this and that. So guys don't want to do it because if they do it to too many women, who are they going to be hooking up with? Right. <laughs> so yeah. And I, I actually have a lot of male uh, clients. A lot of men are buying my book. Actually, I think it's almost 50, 50 oh, awesome. women. Yeah. Because as I said, like the first chapter is very girly. So I think guys would get bored with the sex stories, but, but, um, I find it fascinating to know how we humans lived in the past. We were actually all non-monogamous and then suddenly we became monogamous. And now I almost feel like we are trying to go back to the non-monogamy, but we have all these rules in the society that it's very difficult and challenging. Yeah. We talk about yeah, non-monogamy a lot on this show. <laughs> we did. And we did a whole season yeah. on sex at dawn, which really explores what you're just talking about with yeah. agriculturalism and changing yeah. over from non-monogamy to a monogamous culture. But isn't it interesting? I think the monogamy and non-monogamy is so closely linked to money. I love talking about money. I mean, my whole day I'm basically working in finance. And then when I have free time, I'm, I'm writing sex books and do coaching. But I, I am around money a lot. And I think 
when we had no problem with food and with resources, we were all just having sex with everyone. And then suddenly we, women became property of men because they didn't have the power to have their own land and take care of themselves. And now again, like women are becoming more independent. So they are having more casual sex and they're open to more non-monogamy than before. I feel like it's very interesting to see. Cause like, I think women oftentimes would, would have a problem if, if, if the man, or they would be scared that the man leaves if they're dependent on him mm. financially. But if the woman is not depending on the man financially, then she can decide about different things. Yeah. Mm. And I, I love it. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, very mm. well said. Well, your book sounds fascinating and, um, I would love, so if there's one tip from your book that you think all of our listeners should know, what would it be? One tip? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. There are so many good tips. Okay. Give me a couple of seconds. Okay. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, I just really think that the mindset is the most important. Change your mindset about sex. It's sex, nothing else. It's there to be, it's there for pleasure, mm. for feel good. Yep. It's a tool for you to have an orgasm, be healthy, feel great. And that's how it should be perceived. I love that. Very well said. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on and having this um, really empowered conversation around what is possible you know, around heartbreak and hookups and being empowered in your hookups. I highly recommend if you're single, having a power, a power hookup session <laughs> in phase in your life. Cause it's, it's, I don't regret it. <laughs> um, and, um, so where, so, um, tell us where our listeners can connect with you on socials. Where can they buy your book? Um, what's the best way to continue to follow you in, in, in all of your future endeavors? All right. So I'm on Twitter and Instagram. It's Leah Holmgren. Um, and the book is on Amazon and Barnes Noble and pretty much at this point internationally from Australia, Canada, France, Germany. So I think Amazon mm. is the easiest one. Okay. To buy. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's hook up without heartbreak is the name. Hook up without heartbreak, how to feel empowered after casual sex. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. This was awesome. I can't wait to go out and read the book. Um, thank you. Guys. <laughs> and, um, with that clitorati, we're going to see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> All right.